everyone and welcome to this video on writing to argue. This video will look at the general features of writing to argue, but will look more specifically at the GCSE English Controlled Assessment Task for AQA, which is right about a film you either love or loathe. If you're sitting your GCSE in 2016, this may be one of the tasks that your teacher chooses for you to complete. Aside from that, Writing to Argue is on the AQA GCSE English and English Language exam papers, so this is a really good lesson for everybody who's sitting an AQA GCSE English exam to watch and to take on board all of the features of Writing to Argue. So what is Writing to Argue? Well, in this case, um, specifically the film question, it's explaining why you love or loathe the film that you've chosen, but you've got to provide valid and logical reasons for why you love or loathe that film, okay? Now, there is an element of persuading the reader to agree with your point of view, but it differs from writing to persuade in that you have to acknowledge that there is another side to the argument. So the mark scheme for this controlled assessment task and for the writing tasks on the AQA GCSE English and English language papers are the same essentially. You're marked on whether you can paragraph and that means paragraphing correctly and also paragraphs of different lengths using a variety of different punctuation. We always say to use at least five different types within your writing. Making sure your vocabulary is interesting, making sure your grammar is spot on, making sure your sentence structure is varied, so lots of simple, compound and complex sentences used, and also switching your subordinate clause from the beginning of your sentence to the end, and making sure the openings of your sentences are varied uh, using lots of different ways. So we could start sentences with prepositional phrases, we could start them with verbs, we could start them with subordinating conjunctions. So you need to make sure that you're showing variety in your writing. You also need to show the examiner that you've written in the correct format. So if it asks you to write an article, it needs to be written with a headline and a subheadline. If they ask you to write a speech, then it needs to be written in that format. So pay particular attention to what the question is asking you to do. Also, you need to make sure that you include a variety of linguistic features. So either use your Read My Rules or your DeForest techniques. Now, if you're not familiar with Read My Rules, we will have a look at that in more detail in a moment. And I also have another video on my channel that does specifically go over language analysis and how you can analyse language using the Read My Rules techniques. So features of writing to argue. Effectively, you are influencing the reader to your point of view using a series of logical arguments. But you must also acknowledge the other side of the argument. Now, we call it a gentle nod to the other side. So you're not going to say as much about the other side of the argument as you would your point of view, but you do need to acknowledge that other side. So the question is, why on earth would you want to talk about the opposition's point of view? Well, you want to show the examiner that you are balanced, you're intelligent, and you've actually assessed all options before you've decided which side to choose. So by acknowledging the other side, you've demonstrated to the examiner that you have thought about all of the options before deciding on your point of view. Okay, so let's have a look at the structure of a writing to argue paragraph. Now, this question was about whether young people should be allowed to play violent video games. And I wrote this paragraph based on one of the arguments I thought was relevant for that question. So as always, we always start a paragraph with a topic sentence or the main point of your argument that you want to mention within that paragraph. So I started it with another reason for reducing the age rating on violent video games is that the number of teenagers who are not affected far outweigh the number who do exhibit violent tendencies. So that is my first argument. And then in comes the counter argument. So this is my gentle nod to the other side that I do acknowledge that there is another point of view. 
Whilst many people believe that playing violent video games during the tender teenage years increases the likelihood of violent outbursts, I have to disagree with their argument. Okay, so that is what the other side think. Then here is where I now develop the argument that I mentioned at the beginning of the paragraph. Have these people ever played video games? How have they come to this conclusion, one must ask. As a teenager myself, I often partake in an after-school video game session and fully enjoy the escapism they offer following an arduous day of testing and questioning. Indeed, a recent survey at our school revealed that 80% of students regularly play video games which involve material of an adult nature. Yet, these students don't wield knives or violently abuse fellow students or staff. So if we look at that chunky paragraph, you can see that the majority of it is taken up with how we feel, okay, our point of view. But we've actually acknowledged the other side of the argument in a tiny little bit in the middle, okay? So what I want you to do now is I want you to pause the video and I want you to pick out as many read my rules or deforest linguistic devices that you can See which ones I've used and then have a think about why I have used those techniques. What do I want the reader to feel by using those techniques? Okay, so if you've just paused the video, let's go through this paragraph and see which ones I've used. Okay, so immediately, even before we look at linguistic techniques, we look at the vocabulary used within this paragraph and it's actually very, very varied. Uh, we're using words that we wouldn't use in normal everyday language. We've got words like escapism, we've got words like wield. So definitely the examiner will see that you've used a variety of different words to make your writing more interesting. So we've got, um, from the top, let's go through and see which techniques we've got. So reason for reducing, we could say that that was alliteration. We've got tender teenage years, again, alliteration, likelihood of violent outbursts. I have to disagree with their argument. So we've got personal pronouns. Have these people ever played video games? How have they come to this conclusion, one must ask? So we've got the use of rhetorical questions in there. Then if we look further down, we've got the use of facts, 80% of students. Okay, so we've got a variety of different techniques used within that one paragraph to demonstrate and to build on the argument that we don't think that violent video games have a huge impact on students. Okay, so you will have seen that at the beginning of that paragraph, I used the phrase another reason. So I made it clear to the examiner that I am structuring my arguments in paragraph and I'm using discourse markers. So make sure that each one of your paragraphs uses a different discourse markers. And this handout is available on my website, asureexams.wordpress.com. If that makes your life easier, make sure you print it out and use a variety of those different discourse markers in your answer. Also, punctuation pool, that's also available as a printable handout. Again, just an easy way to remember those different types of punctuation. And we're looking for at least five different types within the whole of our writing piece. And read my rules or deforest techniques. We need to aim for five different types in our answer. Okay, so let's have a look at my read my rules. So we've got repetition, expanded noun phrase, anecdotal experience, DAM, which is short for colloquial language. Um, we've got metaphors, similes and personification. We've got you, which is direct address. We've got rhetorical question. We've got us, we, our, which is use of personal pronouns. We've got lists, emotive language, and the use of sound effects such as alliteration or assonance. So Read My Rules is a really effective way to remember all of those different linguistic devices and to make sure that you get five different types within your piece of writing. Right, so let's have a think about this question then. Write about a film you love or loathe. 
So we need to think of five reasons. This is the extended writing task on the exam, so we definitely want to be writing five paragraphs. And for your controlled assessment task, you could even go further than that. You have, you know, a, an extended time to write this answer. So five, start with five reasons, and if you've got extra time, then you can always add more. So each reason will form a paragraph within your answer. So I thought about this and I thought, well, I think it's easier to write about a film I loathe rather than I love. So one I loathe, and there will be many of you that disagree with this, I'm sure, is The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. And I actually hate this film. And there are many reasons why I really do hate this film. Um, and I thought of five in particular. Apologies if you love this film. You can email me with your reasons as to why you love this film if you want to. Um, that's really good planning for your controlled assessment task or um, even revision for the exam. So please feel free to do that to try to change my mind. But let's have a look at the five reasons I have for why I hate this film. Okay, so reason number one was the lack of female lead characters. So if we think about it, there aren't really any major female characters in it. So that was my first reason. What I've done as well is in each one of my reasons, I've planned which linguistic device I'm going to use within that paragraph. So I decided that within this paragraph, in my answer, I'm going to use address the reader. Okay, my reason too was that I felt there was a lack of personality in any of the characters and I was going to use rule of three in this paragraph. My reason three was I feel it's just far too long. It's one book made into three films. Okay, now it didn't help that when I went to the cinema, the projector broke four times, which obviously extended the period that I had to sit and watch it. So I felt that my anecdotal experience, my personal experience of that would be useful within this paragraph. And I was also going to use facts and opinions. My reason for was I felt there was overuse of CGI and 3D effects and not enough focus on the story itself. And I was going to use the linguistic device of repetition within this paragraph. And um, my last reason was I just thought the plot was really boring and I, I feel it pales in comparison to Lord of the Rings. So I was going to use a list within this paragraph. So you've seen I've picked my five reasons and I've planned where my linguistic techniques are going to go. It may also be useful to, for you to plan which types of punctuation you are going to use in each paragraph if you want to extend that planning further. Right, so this is my example paragraph for one of my reasons. And you will see that I have my main argument, my topic sentence at the top of the paragraph. Then I've got a really small sentence about the counter argument. And then the main bulk of the paragraph is my extended reasoning as to why my argument is the most important thing. OK, so let's have a read through this. Above all, the most compelling reason for hating this film is the time it takes to watch it. Whilst I understand that depth and detail can improve the cinematic experience, one cannot ignore the fact that it eats up three hours of your life. You can't get that time back, so why waste it on a meaningless story? Indeed, the average length of a blockbuster film is just 98 minutes, so why did the makers feel the need to add on an extra 100? I had a particularly gruelling experience when I went to watch this at the cinema, as the projector broke on four occasions during the course of the viewing, lengthening the film by an extra hour. I felt like I was trapped in a never-ending saga. Just like Bilbo Baggins, I experienced a tiresome, arduous and exhausting journey which felt like it was never going to end. Relief flooded over me as the end credits began to roll. I was free to escape the torture chamber of the cinema. I had just spent the last four hours on my own unexpected journey, one of boredom and frustration. 
Okay, so you'll see that obviously I have actually gone quite over the top with the reason as to why I really hate this film. But that's what you need to do. You need to really engage your reader. You need to use a variety of those different techniques. And you need to really explain logically why you loathe that film. So if it were me, I would pause the video here. I would have another look through this example paragraph and I want you to make a list of all of the different linguistic devices I use. I want you to note down how many different types of punctuation I've used and I want you to write down any interesting words that I've used that you wouldn't normally use within your writing but you felt worked particularly well in this paragraph. Okay, so the last thing I've got to say is good luck, really. This is obviously a, a great way to plan for your controlled assessment if this is the one that your teachers get you to do. This is also a great revision task for the exam. So if you're watching this just before you're about to sit your AQA, GCSE, English or English language exams, why not take this question and practice the planning and writing an example paragraph for the writing tasks on the exam paper. It's great revision to sit and have a go before you go into the exam. Well, thanks ever so much for watching. There are loads of other videos on my channel to take a look at. You can head over to my website, asiaexams.wordpress.com for lots of free downloadable resources. And if you have any questions, please do tweet me at asiaexams. Thanks for watching.